Hi, so I want to talk about a really interesting problem, which is often called the busy beaver problem. So I'm going to call this language BB, uh, and it's going to be the encoding of three integers. So normally with languages with Turing machines and other machines and whatnot, we encode the machine. Here we're going to encode three numbers, N, S, and K. So the question of whether this is in, uh, in this language is whether if we consider every Turing machine that has n states, so the n is the number of states here, and with s symbols, so that means tape symbols, although it's not really that important exactly what it is, um, starting with empty input, so the machines always start empty, then what we want to know is how long do these machines run for if they stop? So obviously we can make a Turing machine that runs forever, just moves right forever. But another thing that you can do is to see how long you can go so that the machine actually does stop. So among the machines that do stop, um, the longest possible running one that does stop takes at most this number of transitions. Okay, so among all Turing machines with N states and S symbols, um, the longest running one on empty input that actually does stop takes uh, at most k transitions. So k could be a lot larger, but um, so the, the question is like, we can repeatedly ask this, uh, this language whether or not k is the number that we would want. And if it's not, if it says it's not in there, then we can uh, update it. So uh, to be larger. So one thing that you can show is that the busy beaver number for each N and S is finite because there are only finitely many Turing machines. Some number of them stop and by definition they take a finite number of transitions because they stop. And so therefore um, for a given value of N and S here the the K that corresponds to it is finite. And so we don't have to go uh, infinitely far away. So there's a famous conjecture, um, and there's a lot of evidence to show that this is true, but we haven't actually shown it to be true, is that among all five state Turing machines with two symbols, um, the maximum running time is this number, which is like 47 millions, whatever. Um, if this is not true, then... Uh, we have ran the machines that we don't know will stop that have five states and two symbols. We've ran them for over a hundred billion transitions and they haven't stopped yet. And there's no proof that they will run forever either. So if you want a nice research problem, try to prove that, the, that this number really is this number by showing that the other machines run forever or try to show that the other machines eventually will halt and then it'll disprove this. But there's general consensus that this is true. So what I wanna show here is that this language BB is undecidable. And it's actually not that difficult to prove, but it's it, it gets you to think a little bit differently because we're not encoding a machine here, we're encoding additional information, such as the number of states and symbols and whatnot. So here, what I want to do is I want to, um, let's assume that BB is decidable. Then what I want to do is I want to sh then show that the acceptance problem for Turing machines is decidable based off of that reasoning. So remember the acceptance problem asked whether a given Turing machine and a given input um, the Turing machine accepts that input. We got to figure out whether the Turing machine accepts that input. So let's see. So what can we do? Well, we don't know how long, if this machine is going to stop. So like the one that we were given for this problem, we don't know how long it's going to run, if it's going to stop at all. So what we can do is, assuming that we can solve the BB problem, what we can do is repeatedly ask the solver, the BB solver, uh, for larger and larger values of K 
And then as soon as it says it says yes on the appropriate other inputs, then what we can do is that is the threshold for which if the machine runs longer than that, then uh, what we can do is just simulate the machine for that long. The only problem is that the BB problem has input which is empty, but that's actually really easily fixed. So the ATM problem takes the Turing machine with a certain input, whereas the BB one is asking for us uh, always to be the empty input, but we can we can fix that. So, so let's see. So what can we do? Uh, what we can do is we can make another machine that always has empty input, but then simulates the original machine's input. So, so let's do this. So this is a solver for ATM. So let's make a solver for ATM or decider. So the ATM decider is going to take, I should say on input, uh, M and W where M is a Turing machine and W is some string. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new, so I'm gonna construct a new Turing machine, a uh, Turing machine, let's call it M prime, which is always gonna have empty input so that it works for the, the BB thing. So, so on input uh, empty, uh, the only thing that it's going to do is it's going to simulate M on W. So that's the only thing that it does. So simulate uh, M on W. That's the only thing it does. Okay. So uh, because it has empty input here, what we're how this simulation is going to work probably is it's going to uh, do one transition at a time to write W onto the tape and then send the control over to the M machine and then let it do its thing. So then what we're going to do is, okay, well, this thing is a valuable candidate now. So then what we can do is uh, query the BB decider whether or not uh, this thing, which has a certain number of states, a certain number of symbols, and then just ask, uh, for increasing values of K, whether this machine, oh, whether that um, that triple is in BB or not. So let's do that. So uh, let's say that we're going to set K to be 1. So I'm going to do things really inefficiently, uh, which is not really of a problem here. And you can make it more efficient, but it's, it's not really that big of a deal. So I'm going to set K to be 1 initially. So I'm going to have a while true loop and then I'm going to ask, so query that BB solver uh, if um, the triple, which is N, S, and K is in BB or not. And here the N and the S are going to come from M prime, the new machine we made. So N equals the number of states in the M prime machine that we made. Uh, let's, let's do pink. So then K, uh, S here is going to be the number of tape symbols. So then once we once we actually make M prime, then uh, we could just write these numbers down and we never have to change them. So then here K, uh, if this is not true, so then uh, if uh, not true, so if it's not the case that this triples in BB, I'm going to increase K by 1. Okay, so if it's, if it's not in there, I'm just going to increase K by 1. And we know from our earlier arguments that this will eventually exit the loop. So actually, I should say if true, uh, exit the loop. Okay. So then, uh, yeah, so at that point we'll exit the loop and uh, we will uh, exit the loop in this case because we know that the corresponding K value, once we know N and S, is always finite. And so we have a finite number of iterations of this loop right here. So the key part of this 
is once we know what k is, then what we can do is just um, run the m prime machine for up to that uh, amount of time. So, oops. So then for what we're going to do is run m prime for uh, k transitions or until it stops. Okay. So the behavior of m prime is going to be identical to what m does. So if m prime runs forever, then that must have meant that m ran forever. And if m prime accepted, that must have meant that m accepted w. If m prime explicitly rejected, then that means m explicitly rejected w. So then we can uh, use that information down here. So let's use well light green. So so step five, if uh, m prime has not stopped at this point, stop by now. That must have meant by the busy beaver uh, question, that must have meant that it uh, must have ran at least that long, which means it had to have run forever because the BB uh, question had K be the maximum number of iterations that are needed. And among all machines that actually stop. And so if it goes more than that, then it, by definition, it does not stop. So that must have meant that the M machine that we were given in, at the very beginning couldn't have stopped because if it did, the M prime machine would have stopped, which means that M, the original machine, did not accept W because it ran forever. So therefore, if M prime has not stopped by now, it never will, which means that we should reject. So M, the original machine, couldn't have accepted W because if it did, it would have stopped and M prime would have stopped, which we can verify it doesn't. So then now, if it did stop, so otherwise, so then if, oops, if M prime accepts, then that must have meant that since it does exactly the same thing that M did on W, um, therefore, M prime uh, accepted, therefore, M accepted W before, and that's the question we're trying to answer because we're trying to solve the ATM problem. So we need to say accept here. And then if M prime rejects, then that must have meant that since it did the same thing that M did on W, then we should reject also. Okay, and that's the whole machine. So it involves quite a few steps here, but the idea is to phrase it first in the right language so that um, it's the right answer for the BB problem. And then because we know that the BB question for a given number of states and, and number of tape symbols, the number of steps taken is always finite by definition. And so therefore uh, this while loop will take a finite number of iterations. And so since each one of them takes finite time because we assume that BB was decidable, this whole loop takes a finite amount of time. This will take a finite amount of time because we know that K is finite by definition. And so obviously the whole thing runs in a finite amount of time and it answers the ATM question. One thing that you can do to make this slightly faster is instead of adding one here, what you can do is to say, I'm gonna multiply by two or something. Uh, it makes it a little quicker, um, but the numbers are just so massive that it's not going to make any real difference in terms of uh, de real decidability. So it's not going to drop to like polynomial time or something. The numbers are just so massive. Um, yeah, so that implies that the BB question is undecidable because if it were, we just made a solver for the ATM problem, but we know that it's um, undecidable. Um, so therefore, uh, we have that the busy beaver numbers are undecidable. The computational question, by the way, is actually something that is not computable. And that makes sense because if this was decidable, then you can actually compute that actual number. So, uh, thankfully we have shown that it's undecidable, which is what we want. 
So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments about the busy beaver numbers down into the comments down below. It's a really interesting topic. As always, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.